Okay, so the next topic we're going to talk about is solving a triangle uh, with law of sines problem type 2. Now, this might be, you know, I, I would probably say it's the hardest topic in here, okay? Just because it has a lot of really, really tricky situations. But um, let's just kind of walk through it and we'll talk about it as we go. Just, just know that you're going to have to have a little patience with this one, okay? Um, okay, so... Consider a triangle ABC. They give you two sides, right? They give you C is this, A is this, and an angle, big C, right? Angle C is this. So they give you two sides and an angle, okay? They tell you the figure is not drawn to scale, of course. The triangle is not a right triangle. That's why we're using the law of sines. And there's a couple key bits of information here. Carry your intermediate computations to at least four decimal places. So that seems to be important, and then uh, round to the nearest tenth. Uh, okay, so that's important too. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. Let's start off that way. Let's just fill in what we know. We'll, we'll kind of go through it you know, little by little. We'll figure it out. All right, so let me get this recording thing here over there. All right, we should be good. Okay, so it says C is 52. So this value is 52. Um, A is 57, so this value is 57. Um, the value for C right here is going to be 41 degrees. Okay. Now, so you set this up just like problem type 1 for law of cosines. We're going to use um, sine of C, right? So sine of C divided by C is equal to sine of A divided by A. And we're going to solve that equation. We're going to plug in what we know. Well, we know a little bit about this. We know sine of C is going to be 52, so let's put 52 on the bottom. Uh, angle C is 41 degrees, so sine of angle C, which is 41 degrees, okay, is going to be equal to um, sine of A, which we don't know, okay? We're trying to find angle A. So if we don't have angle A, we'll, we'll try to find it. We'll call it angle A divided by the value of A, which we do know, that's 57. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to solve this like normal. This is, you know what? I probably should have explained this in the last time. It's easier if you cross multiply these. Okay. So if you just cross multiply uh, here, you know, these, these go together like that. And these go together like this. If you're not familiar with cross multiplication, just ask somebody else in the room. I'm sure they know. Okay. So 57 times sine of 41 degrees is equal to 52 times sine of A, okay? We want to get that A by itself, so divide both sides by 52 and you're in good shape. So we'll divide this side by 52, okay? And then we'll divide this side by 52. So these cancel, and you're going to get a is equal to 57 times the sine of room around a room, 54 degrees, all divided by 52. Okay, great. So type that in your calculator. Let's see what you get, okay? So remind yourself, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? This is not A. This is sine of A. I should have wrote that down. That's sine of A. Okay, so to get A, what we're going to do is take the inverse, right? The inverse of this value. Well, to get this value, I'm going to type this directly in my calculator right here. Okay? That's supposed to be an arrow. Okay, I type that in my calculator and I get this right here. All right, now, if you want to be very accurate, it says round to four digits, okay? You could round to four digits or you could just take the whole value, okay? So how you do that is you go to your calculator, you're going to do the sine inverse because we want to find out what A is by itself. So we want to know what, um, oh, I'm sorry, we want to know what A is by itself. So A is going to be equal to the sine inverse of this thing, okay, or the arc sine, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's going to go in here, all right? Well, here's the value of the thing I'm putting inside the parentheses. And here is the arc sine of it. So 
sine inverse of this of this value is going to give me my outcome here of 45.98 and they want you to round to one the tenths so that's going to make it 46 that's, you just got to be careful what you're rounding so a is 46 degrees now um I'm, i'll point out some other things about that there's a tricky step in there i'll point that out in the end okay all right so we have 46 degrees. Well, we know some things because we know a triangle is 180 degrees. So if we have 180 minus what we just found out, the 46 degrees, minus uh, what we know for C, which is 41 degrees, that's going to give us um, 93 degrees. Okay? All right. So that's the measure of angle B. Okay? So this is going to be... Okay, so that's the measure of angle B. Now, what we're going to do now is try to find some other things in here. So we have, we have A. Now, A is 46 degrees. We have B, which is now 93 degrees. Okay, we just have to find B, and then we're done. Okay, so... How are we going to find B? Well, we're going to come down here and do the law of sines again. So this time, we're going to use sine of C divided by C equals sine of B divided by B. And sine of C is going to be sine of 41 degrees divided by 52. And sine of B is going to be sine of... 93 degrees, that's the one we just found, divided by B. Okay, so again, cross multiply. If you cross multiply and divide like we did up there, you're going to get B is equal to 52 times sine of 93, add 3, sorry, divided by um, sine of 41. Okay, all right, so yeah, I'm sorry, it's real sloppy, but I'm doing my best here. Okay, uh, that goes right in your calculator. So you type that right in your calculator, and bam, you got the side length for B, just like that. So B is going to be 79.1, what is that, 1.5, but they want it to round the nearest 10, so we'll make that 79.2, and that'll be your answer. So that's B. So then you're good, right? All right, seems like it was easy, but it, it was a little bit harder than that. Let me show you a couple cases where you could run in. That was an easy case. So again, B was 79.2. All right, so I'm going to take you to one of Alex's explanations because there's a couple tricky problems on here. you got to be careful. Here, all right, and I took a snapshot of one just to show you an example. All right, so here's one right here. All right, so... When we take the sine inverse of something, they're given a special case here. All right, let me write on this. Is it, is it gonna let me write on this? Yeah, okay. Here's the key thing right here. So, sine of an angle is always less than or equal to one. That's key. See, in this case, when they worked it out and they were doing um, the inverse sine of that decimal, see how this is 1.2? That's not going to work. That means there's going to be no solution. Let me show you where that is on our step. So on our step, it's, let's see, let's go back to ours. Um, so our problem's right here. All right, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, our problem's going to be right here. You see this value we found right here? That's less than one. So our problem will have a solution. Had we done this and this value been bigger, one or bigger, okay, um, you would not have a solution. You would say no solution, okay? But because this value in this step right here is less than one, we do have a solution, okay? So that's one tricky case. Here's the other tricky case. Um, all right, let me, I pulled this one up too. So Alex... Okay, so if you think about it, all right, this is another problem, separate problem, but um, when you're running through it, 
Okay, they found this B value right here. Man, why isn't it letting me write on it? I won't write on this thing. Ah, uh, should let me write on it. Yeah, okay, so they found this B value right here. It's supposed to be a highlighter. They found that B value to be less than one, so that means they do have a solution. But now, if you think about the unit circle, there's two solutions. There's two arc signs for um, a sign that fits this angle. So you have 19.35 degrees and 160.64 degrees, okay? It's because there's a point here and a point here where that sine function works, okay? So really, once we find out what our value is, we should take the sine inverse, or really we were writing it like this instead of arc sine, because that might be a little bit confusing. We were writing it as sine inverse of that value that we found. Okay, we should do this one, and we really should do 180 degrees minus the sine inverse of whatever that thing is. Okay, because that'll give us this value. Why do you need both? Well, because sometimes a triangle can fit in more than one way if it's not right. Okay, so if I came down here a little bit, let me come down here a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, no, this is not what I want. All right, there we go. Okay, let me come down. No. All right, well, you can see it right here at the bottom of your screen. So um, let me come over here and get the highlighter again. Right here. So if you figure that it, their other angle was 96 degrees. So if you had 96 plus 19.35, that's fine. It's 115 which is fine, that leaves room for our last angle. But in this case, 160, what's 160 plus 96? Well, that's bigger than 180 degrees. Okay, that's a problem. You can't have two of your angles in your triangle being bigger than 180 degrees, okay? Because if that's the case, there's no room for the third angle, okay? All right, so this is what they call the ambiguous case. It's a little tricky, and you might need a little extra help on this, this particular type of case. So. It'd be worth asking either Mrs. T or Mr. E if he can kind of give you a hand on it. But the key comes back to when you do the sine inverse, you should do 180 minus the sine inverse for one value and the sine inverse for the other value. Okay? And then, then check them down below. Okay? So hopefully that's helpful. I know that this one's a little bit confusing. This is one you're probably just going to need a little extra help with. Just take your time. Better to do this three times and then... Um, slowly three times and doing it wrong like six or seven times, okay? All right, good luck.